we are back for another episode of the Grunge Bible Podcast. This is episode 123. My name is Ethan Shalloway, and I'm joined by Chris Salona, as usual, and his little friend. Do we have a there name for him, Chris? The Captain. The Captain. The Captain. And sad- oh, there it is. Sadly, I don't have my captain with me like I usually do, because I'm across the pond right now. It's this is our uh, farthest, farthest Zoom call for an episode we've ever done. I think this is the furthest Zoom call that I've ever been on. Oh, that's awesome! I think it is. No, no Aussies. No, I don't. I don't think I've ever zoomed with anyone from Australia. So, do we ever talk to Kafaro when he was in Australia? I don't think so. I think just when he was in LA. Yeah, uh, but we are here from, uh, you know, just one of those weeks. We coming off the heels of a really big episode. We had PD USA on, on last week that we were very excited for, and uh, I think it went really well. Chris, I listened back and it was awesome. Got some good reviews. Um, so this week is going to be a nice, uh, relaxed kind of life update Q and A type thing, and uh, and take it easy because we uh, we've had a lot going on, Chris. Yeah, we certainly have. It's been uh, it's been a really really busy last seven to nine days, but particularly the last yeah I'd say the last seven for sure have just been a whirlwind. <laughs> I mean you're in you're in Lithuania right now. Um, we yes. we saw one another. We were together for a couple of days, like five days ago. Uh, so between then and now, uh, <laughs> a lot's gone on. Uh, you yeah. know, you've you've gone over to uh, to Europe, where that's that's where you are now. And I'm, you know, things are kind of slowing down for me after the busyness, which is good. But yeah, man, last week was last week was sick. Um, that episode was so yeah. fun to do. Um, PD is just the man. Uh, he was he was so kind and he was so so gracious just of of everything, uh, and he had a lot of really insightful things to say. So once again, really thankful that that he uh, you know he obliged and he chose to come onto the show. Uh, I hope everybody out there enjoyed it. But yeah, this episode is definitely going to be like the uh, the long Cruzy drag one. of a cigarette after uh, you know after a busy a busy day, which we're we're entitled to. This is episode one twenty three. We haven't done a Q and A since I think one thirteen. So in ten weeks, there's a lot of questions that have uh, been festering in the minds of the people. So today's the day we're going to get to it. So um, before we do that, though, as 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 we do around these parts, we want to ask one another how we're doing. So Ethan, how are we doing? Fill us in, man. Like, what what have you been up to? What's what's been going on with you? Yeah, man, I am I am I'm a little tired. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a simple way of putting it. Um, but I'm very, you know, I'm living life right now too. So I'm tired, but I feel good. Um, so yeah, Saturday we had we were in Pennsylvania together. We had our uh, competition, and and you came down to watch, and we stayed up in the late hours of the night. We were playing this game called Barn Ball, which everybody should know about. Yeah. Uh, so we were just basically wiffle ball, but you're hitting to the side of a barn, a barn and you, you know, there's no running. They're just automatic, you know, outcomes. Based and, off uh, of so where we you did hit that. the ball. Yeah. And so we played and then played late, drank beer, you know, had coffee. And then uh, you had to drive back to Boston. And then I had to drive to New York to catch a flight to go to Vienna, Austria, where I competed on Tuesday, and then the next morning I left to come to Lithuania. So right now I'm in Palinga, Lithuania, for the next week week to train and uh, potentially compete today. I don't know how my body's going to respond to everything, but uh, pretty crazy, you know, just like bouncing around, doing some travel. Um, you know, the travel has, it, it's, there's a lot of public transportation that we've have to, had to do, and uh, we don't have... We don't speak the language. Luckily, a lot of people speak English in the world. And, um, you know, when you go over when you go over to a new country, definitely when you're leaving the States and coming over, um, obviously people go between countries a lot here. It really opens your eyes every time you do it, Chris. I've had a lot of, I've only been out here for four or five days and I've had all these, you know, I've had these thoughts before and experiences, but they're new and I'm older and you see it differently. Like every time I'm on the plane, I just look at the map and I'm watching the plane go across and I'm, and I'm, I'm studying like Europe and where we're going to be, and I'm looking at you look at the Eastern Europe, and you th- I think about all the the languages and how the language like shifts the more Western you go, and then it becomes like more U.S. and then flip over, and then the U.S. is like basically just uh, English, and then obviously Spanish, but like you know there's so many languages here, and there's so much different interactions, and it's crazy, and and it's just a different speed. It's totally it's a different world. And that's every continent you go to. So every time I do this travel, and then and then we come up to Lithuania, it's very 
northern, you know, the northern parts of Europe, and we're on like the coast, so it's, it's way different. It's really similar to Finland, but it's just like they're different than the big cities in your. Um, so it's a. Uh, uh, it's been it's been really good. Like I said, I've been thinking a lot, you know, kind of in, enjoying, uh, you know, life and figuring out, you know, just the different sides of it. Um, makes me want to pick up cigarettes. There's a lot of people that smoke cigarettes. Everybody <laughs> smokes of, cigarettes. A lot of people are smokers, Ethan. <laughs> a lot of people are smokers, man. It's just, it's it's so funny how uh, it's just, yeah, it's different. Like people, I understand when my buddy Nick said that he went to London, he picked up cigarettes for a couple of months and, you know, and then he, but then he quit or something. But right. Yeah, dude, it's it's been sick, and then I think um, in a week we're gonna go to Norway, which I'm really excited for, and hope to be able to do more, uh, more stuff in nature there. Uh, we're not, don't think I'll be able to do much here. Haven't done as much exploring in that regard. Right. Kind of stinks, but been so busy. But yeah, so yeah, I'm all over the place. I'm 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 doing good though. So it's it's three o'clock here, and it's seven or eight o'clock for Chris in the Eastern time zone. So I'm seven hours ahead. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, this is uh, this has the the distinction of being the earliest I've ever recorded a podcast. So, uh, but that's the thing when 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 you're you know both co-hosts of the Grunge Bible podcast and you've got a 122 week streak of not missing. Hit streak. This is just what you have to do. I mean, we're 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 more than double Dimaggio right now. I mean, <laughs> you double Dimaggio. That's only that's only 112. Um, you know, and here we are at 123 now. So, uh, but that's what we have to do. But it, it's it's fun to check in. You know, uh, even in the middle of all of the travel and just everything that's going on. So, yeah, man, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, you know, you made it over there in one piece, and that you're you're doing well, and you're gonna have some really cool experiences over there, which is which is you know, at the end of the day, a really important and beneficial part. Yeah, absolutely. The uh... Yeah, carrying around the javelins and all the gear, I, you know, it Man makes me ass. think about Matt Gannon and what he said: "Those who travel the lightest travel the farthest." If I if Absolutely. I could just strip all of my stuff and not worry about carrying, you could you can move, man. But when you have all that stuff, it is it is taxing. So, yeah. but it had to be done. It had to bring the javelins around, you know. Exactly. There's no there's no way around it. <laughs> um, how are you doing, Chris? Though I'm good, man. So as you said, uh, it's it was a busy. Uh, Busy end of last week, beginning of this week. So we were together uh, in Pennsylvania, which was really great. So I drove down Saturday, watched you compete uh, at Jav Fest in East Stroudsburg. Then we went back to the uh, the Shalloway household and we we made merry uh, with the boys, which was a lot of fun. We had a, a live Clash of Clans war, which we won. Uh, That's if you right. Follow Grunge that, Bible, that showed you, up on the did, page. You, yeah, you did. You may have seen uh, a photograph of the uh, the the League of Gentlemen who uh, completed uh, that live <laughs> clan war. Uh, you know, a couple of us had some three star attacks that were really important. And uh, we move on. And, yeah, man, that was a really fun night. Uh, travel the next day was a pain in the ass. And then, yeah, the following two days, I had to I had to get up at 4 in the morning on both Monday and Tuesday coming off the heels of that. So <laughs> I didn't sleep well Sunday night because I had to, you know, get everything ready for the PD podcast to drop on Monday morning. Uh, and then, you know, you only sleep so well when you're getting up at 4 in the morning. So I feel like I'm just now kind of finding my equilibrium, which is great because it's just in time for me to lose it all again this weekend. I've, I've got some events with with my friends planned um, that will undoubtedly go into the late hours that's how it works, of the night. Man. Yeah, it's just you that's, know that's how it works. Right, right when you start feeling better on Wednesday, Thursday, they're thrown back into the flood. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so, so, but you know, this is just uh, it's just a symptom of life, and it's you know it means that we have people in our lives, and, and we got shit going on. So, uh, this is just the it's the tax man is coming to collect, which I'm all right with. Yeah. So I, I, if you're if you're a first time listener or if you're <laughs> jumping in, <laughs> what a hell of an uh, episode! You're probably like, what to, to, what to the select. hell are these? Yeah, yeah, what yeah, a hell of an episode to start talk. on. Yeah, so um, you know it's the summertime, so please go back and, and check out any episode that we've done. Uh, we'll let our work speak for itself. Go back, listen to, have some fun, and um, we're gonna get some Q and As. But I, we do have some Patreon supporters that will put up with all of our bullshit, and they they like to hear about our, our stuff, Chris. They like to hear what's going on and the inner inner workings of uh, Grunge Bible. So you know this and this was out to them, our top level Patreons who. Um, you know, support us every week, every exactly. every week, every month. 
They're funding this month, enterprise. No, we, we say them every week. Yeah. yeah so go we ahead. Say them every week. So well, this is a, this is great because uh, we do have another opportunity to ring the bell. Um, there's another person of action out there, and uh, I would like to welcome D Boat to the uh, Legion of Top Tier Supporters. And actually, I received a message. So the timing of this is very important. Okay. So Saturday. Uh, last Saturday uh, at 1226 in the morning, I received a direct message from D-Boat um, and it reads, hey man, I'm a huge fan of the pod. Ethan actually name dropped me in your most recent Q&A episode. I asked the question about your most anticipated concert. I listen every week and I plan on becoming a $10 Patreon subscriber this week. Anyways, on one of the more recent pods, I heard you say you're going to the Mud Honey Show on October 26th. That's my birthday and I live in Lowell and I have already bought my tickets and I hope to meet you. Have a great weekend, bro. Thank you for the product you put out. I'm a huge fan. So, Debo, thank you for those kind words. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to, to meeting you on October 26th of the Mud Honey Show. But the important reason why I mentioned the time. So, Saturday the morning, oh. Saturday at 1226 a.m. Am, D boat sends this message mere 70 minutes later he lets me know that he subscribed so uh, that's a person that's a man of action right there D boat he's like he yeah. says he's gonna do something and then not and just over an hour later he does it so D boat thank you that's so amazing. much for that I'm really happy to have you as a part of this uh really glad you enjoy the show well, it's also you know what's also important to know because this is a q a episode and we're gonna read some people up we may shout them out D boat, you know, he was he he was used to be just a, a Q and A guy, you know. He came, yeah. well, he listens to everything, but but he got called into the big, he got called up one time from the big leagues. We we asked one of his questions, and now look at him, he's a top level Patreon. Now he's gonna get to see a like if you're basically if, if you're a top level Patreon, you get to see a show with Chris. That's what's coming. <laughs> Exactly. I've seen shows. So far, I've seen I've seen shows with three top level Patreon supporters. Uh, Rachel Corning, Alex Long, and Eddie Vedder got me through my second divorce, and 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 Doug Endy's son. So yeah, was there? um, I thought there was another Alex or Alex Long. Yeah, yeah. I saw a show with him. I've also seen a show with my mother too. So (laughs) there's like five of them. So become a a top level Patreon supporter, you get to meet Chris. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. If I mean, it's just funny that this tour away from it. It is crazy that there's a, there's a big there's a big following um, in the Northeast in that area because oh yeah, um, and it just works out. Yeah, that's we all, roll that's deep right on these parts. That's great. <laughs> so so Debo without joins, further ado, <laughs> yeah, Debo joins a pretty good list of individuals that's here, be... um, and I'd like to read them now uh, you know, because that's that's what I do at this part of the episode. So uh, I'll, top I'll level supporters on Patreon, shout out to the following. Go to John, Eric R. Berry, Sherry Matthews, Keith White, Corden Stewart, Julie Van Siever, Epona, Granny Grunge, Faith Bittner, Eddie Vedder got me through my second divorce, Brother Nature, Seattle 4 fanboy from New Jersey, Fresh Tendonitis, Alex Long, Captain High Top, Black Hole Sean, Chris LSMS, Nikki Six, Kara K, What the Fuck's Up Denny's, Doug Endy, Millie, Rachel Corning, The Blue Owl, Fuck Soup, Jamie Lynn, Laura and Irene, Marianne, Alexis Shannon, Carlene Salona, and Jade Mercado. And a good tidbit about Jade Mercado, Ethan. Jade Mercado is our longest tenured top tier supporter on Patreon. Jade joined the cause way back on May 7th, 2021. So well over two years of service now at this point. <laughs> That's unreal. That's amazing. Yeah. She's always been there. She's been a really good, good supporter over the years. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have at this moment, we have, I think, 31 top tier supporters on Patreon. 21 of them have been with us for over a year. So that steadfast support uh, yeah. is very special to me. And we're on a roll. Uh, we've yeah, got a few new ones the last couple weeks. It was, it was funny, dude, on my way to, uh, <laughs> I think it was, I think it maybe it was the episode that I talked about the uh the um, U.S. Championship that my mom listened to it for the first time. Yes, she listened to that I think episode. so. The waffles or, 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 or pancakes discussion, she mentioned that she had heard us uh, yes. debate. Yes, so she, she, she listened to it for the first time. I think, I think something came up. I think it was when Doug you know, bought the microphone or something. My dad probably was curious of what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were driving to New York. He was dropping me off. He like he Elijah was supposed to, but he's like, I'll do it. I was like, all right, then time in the car. And uh, it's like, sounds great. And uh, he's like, so I was like, I listened to a few episodes of your podcast. And I was like, really? I was like, all right. Um, it's like, what'd you think? He said, so I think you're 
Your Patreons have some interesting names. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely do. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of them. Eddie Vedder got me through my second divorce. Fuck soup. What the fuck's up, Denny's? I mean, there's, there's a really good uh, Seattle 4 fanboy. That's another good one. Brother Nature. Yeah. Captain High Top. Yeah, we've got some We've got some good ones. I always love the direction the that people behind take them, these but... things. Yeah, you know, because you could just put your name in. Otherwise, you can get a little creative, so... So now the parents, parents are all listening. I always get like right, a level so, of secondhand embarrassment when somebody tells me that I, someone that I know in real life tells me that they listen to their podcast. So like the, for the first time in my life, I posted about the podcast on my personal Instagram after we did the PD episode. And I had a bunch of people like, oh, I was actually listening to your podcast like last week or something, or oh, I'm going to check this episode. And I'm like, please don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's a good product though. All right. Let's hit, we'll answer some questions for yeah, the people. Yeah, let's, and let's we'll... hit some Q&A. Um, so first off, it's not a question from anybody on Instagram, but I have a question for you, Ethan. Um, sure. And, and this kind of got lost in the shuffle with the last few weeks. We've been busy and we had the interview and it wasn't the correct forum. But Ethan, what are your thoughts on the big news that Creed is back? So Creed is officially back in case you didn't know. Um, they announced that they are going to headline something called the Summer of 99 Cruise in April of 2024. Um, they're headlining with Three Doors Down and joining them on that cruise will be esteemed bands such as Buck Cherry, Tonic, Vertical Horizon, Fuel, The Verve Pipe, Tantric, wait, wait, wait. Dishwalla, Louise Post wait. of Veruca Salt, and Nine Days. Okay. For, first off, is this an actual cruise? This is an actual cruise to the Bahamas with, from with Miami. all of those bands. Now, uh, now all of those bands are going to be on it? All of those what? bands I, are going to be on the cruise. <laughs> this is that's pretty crazy. That's I didn't pretty realize nuts. that. I didn't realize that they had the facilities for something like that. Yeah, but I guess cruises are massive, so I think it's awesome. I mean, I'm assuming that they kind of these bands chose to do a cruise because like people will go to a cruise no matter what. So it's probably sold out because you have and people it is that. Sold out. Yeah, I'd say it's like a good good time to go on a cruise and you get all that stuff. I mean, it's a good package deal. So they're saving their asses if they were to you know go on tour regularly and actually at the sellout shows. Um, but it's awesome, dude. I want to go. I mean, I was going to say up. like never, I, I've, I've never I'm been on a cruise. I want to go. I'm in full support of this enterprise. I think it's sick, and I also want to go. It is sold out, so we we're, we might have to feel around and make some friends between yeah. now and April. If anybody has any connections and is able to help grunge bible get on that boat that yeah that cruise ship yeah the yacht i don't know <laughs> not not the I boat, on. like like the actual boat like this this boat right. we need to get on um ethan I, I need to read you some of the copy from the website as it relates to creed uh and there's one <laughs> sentence in here that i think if more people knew about it uh the people who are primping in their hand mirrors all high and mighty would get a little upset about but um nevertheless uh on the on the website you scroll down and it says creed's first public performance in over a decade and here's the copy <laughs> Get ready to rock your days and nights away with mind-blowing live shows, including two unique headline sets from Creed. You'll bear witness up close to collaborations and experience authentic throwbacks to the epic summer of 99 with the rest of our lineup, including Three Doors Down, Buck Cherry, Tonic, and more. Let the nostalgia kick into high gear and take you back to the 1990s grunge era. They called it grunge. They called it grunge. Chris, for a second there, I just closed my eyes and, and just pictured myself on a tractor in the heat of the summer listening to my classic rock station and oh, having yeah. <laughs> DJ Chris Salona <laughs> talk about how We're everybody's back coming with 40 back. minutes of uninterrupted hits on 96.9 <laughs> WVIN. <laughs> classic rock block coming at you. Un- Absolutely. Uninterrupted. Double shot Tuesday. That was amazing. Yeah, that was Double that was shot great. Tuesday, yeah. Um, what did they... Um, there was something now I forget it because we just said a bunch of stuff. But there was something else in there that was uh, a really good good word. Um, Up close collaborations, authentic throwbacks, the nostalgia kicking into high gear. They said, "Yeah, one of the take you back to the 1990s grunge era." So yeah, Creed's, that's Creed's cool. grunge. Creed is grunge. You Creed's heard it, grunge. yeah, exactly. The, it, the, the discussion is done. The, the, the discussion is here. done. So that's that's good news. Yeah, I would I would love to fucking go to that. That'd be sick. That'd be really. Hell cool. yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I want. So, I mean, yeah, we gotta go. Yeah, I think we have to go. Um, what about here, what do you think of Three Doors Down? I don't like them. 
kryptonite <laughs> i don't like them uh no yeah. i like uh they have a song uh i think it's called be like that it's kind of like a slow ballad oh yeah she spends her days in california something 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 yeah they have a lot of songs like that Chris. they have a lot of, all, all, all of those might... bands have a lot of songs like that yeah um that's Sheesh. good that's really yeah. that genre man that genre is is still it's, you know I mean, clearly it's, still, it's sold it out. They're making has money. has something. Yeah. That's what I mean. It still has something for oh, yeah, our it age. Does. Totally does. All right. Next question, Ethan. Uh, here we go. What would you do if you were a man, but also a spoon? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, if I was a man, but also a spoon. So are my hands spoons, you think? Or like my head? Do I, you think, think like, I think you're just like the spoon man. So whatever that means for you. Do you think I, so, well, if I'm the spoon man, then I'd be, you know, artist. And right. uh, I don't know, I'd probably, if I was a big spoon, I'd hope that I could eat a, like a, a big bowl of ice cream. Like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever proportionally, however big a, like I guess a swimming pool full of ice cream, you know? Yeah. Ice cream cone, maybe I'd get, you know, put put some cone on like, you know, flip the Eiffel Tower upside down or something, let me. Mm -hmm. Spoon it out. Yeah, I'd probably say, yeah, you know, I'd be want to be eating ice cream. What about you? What if you were a spoon man? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it would severely impact my day to day life. I, I, I wouldn't want to be a spoon man, so I don't really want to have any part of that. You know? Oh yeah. Um, tough. Interesting question. Interesting question. Yeah, that's that's a good. Don't we, know what we, they were looking for. But I don't know what they trying. were looking for, but I hope we gave it to them. All right, let's move on to this next question here, and this one comes from uh, one of my guys. This comes from brother Tom. So shout out to Tom. Uh, and Tom wants to know, as a wish, pick any three bands ever to produce one more album in their prime. Uh, and this is a really good question, obviously, as it relates to the genre that we typically cover around here, because most of the bands are, I would say, are no longer in their prime by virtue of death or just natural aging. So, um, you know, it's it's a ripe ground, grunge would say, I, I would say for this question, but there's also a lot of ways you could take this, uh, you know, because there's a lot of music out there yeah. and there's a lot of bands that are no longer in their prime. So I think three might be tough to kind of, out of all the bands, but uh, I'll see, see if we can pick a couple. Yeah. Uh, this, one, this, this is a good question. I think that I, I definitely wanted another Nirvana album. I yeah. think a few years that later, gotta like, be in there. have them in their prime. Yeah, I, th I think that one's a safe one. Um, maybe it's a cop out, but I don't know. I think so. Like, because when you say they're in their prime, like I'm wondering if you want somebody that like maybe like if we could have got another. Yeah, you know, it just sounds bad to say, like get another Pearl Jam uh, album thrown in like the '94, you know, '95 time zone and stuff right, like. Yeah. If they just had like another one come out, yeah. Um, because they're still making albums, but they're asking their prime. So like, if we can get another, you know, ten type album from them, what it would like. Like you know, if ten was a like? double album and you just never heard it. Yeah, that's a good way to that's a good way to put it too. If you could have a double mm -hmm. album, um, yeah. So I think Nirvana's Nirvana's got to be on there. Um, let's see who other, you know, for staying in the, yeah, this tough question. What do you, what do you think, Chris? So give me a second to, to turn yeah, a few more bands yeah, in my absolutely. head. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's a few, like I, I would have been really interested to see what Mother Love Bone maybe would have done, um, you know, post 1990 if Andrew Wooden hadn't passed away, because that's an interesting one though, because I don't even think Mother Love Bone had reached their peak yet. I mean, a lot of the demos that, uh, you know, Pearl Jam began working off of for 10 you know, those were Mother Love Bone demos. Those are from Stone and Jeff. Um, so I would be really interested. There's an alternate universe where, you know, Alive, for example, was was a Mother Love Bone song and the music was a Mother Love Bone song. It would have been interesting yeah. to see what Andrew Wood would have done with that. Um, you know, there's also obviously you go back, um, you know, back past decades. I mean, you know, another Jimi Hendrix album would have been really cool. I mean, obviously yep, all of I've the usual Jimmy. suspects of, of those who have died before their time, you know, there's also breakups. I mean, if, if, uh, but you know, this is also, if they hadn't died, I mean, what Led Zeppelin would have sounded like in the eighties had Bonham not passed away. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different ways. I mean, even uh, Mungo Jerry, like what that, what that would have looked like. Allman brothers. If, uh, if, if Dwayne Can Allman he? hadn't passed away, that would have been an interesting one. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I kind of knew that this was kind of go towards that, Death. like the people that we lost and how their, right. their time got, you know, a little bit short, uh, a little out of left field. I, I probably said this before, but I'd like another prime 
Mumford and Sons album, <laughs> like Little Lion Man type stuff, because oh, yeah. they, you know, he's changed. They've changed a lot. They've become, you know, a lot more different than the uh, the Mumford and Sons that we that people fell in love with, I guess. Yeah. See, so yeah, that's way different. But that's like, you know, I'm trying to think of like bands with arcs that maybe you know, or just bands. Uh, they're still that making good music. Grew but, to hate one another, and that you know torpedoed their careers as, as a band. I mean, there's obviously a lot of examples Oasis. of that. I could do without another Oasis album, but I don't know. I mean, like another, like from their <laughs> peak, like what's the story, Morning Glory type Oasis? Like I get down with Brit Brit Rock, Brit Pop, whatever you want to call it. Like I kind of like that. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, I'd be all right with what that. What about another Who album then? <laughs> oh, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Who's Next is enough for me. <laughs> who's, who's Next is good. Yes. So that's a good one. Uh, solid, next, solid question. Yeah, that's uh, a good question. That was would be fun to. Would, mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Next question. Are you ready for this one? Yeah. I think you'll you'll have some things to say about this. But the question is: Nirvana Grohl or Foo Fighters Grohl? You have to pick. Mm. Yeah, this is good. Um, you know, after having that conversation with PD last week, he brought up uh, Dave Grohl's drummer and gave some good insight and just thoughtful response. And, you know, I was going to say that earlier. He. Uh, you know, it's fun to have, obviously, that conversation we had because, you know, through his music, you get a certain taste and through his comedy, but it was nice to hear him just talk and hear his voice of, like, how yeah. he, he really thinks about things and his process. So he was talking about how Dave really played the music exactly the way the song needed it, how the band needed it, and uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, but I'm going to, I don't, you know, but I'm going to say I'm taking Dave Grohl with the foo. Because without Dave Grohl and the Foo, we don't have the Foo. And he's so, you know, he's just critical for that band, obviously. He's, he's, he is the band. He is so the band. I think that what he does, I mean, he, he still tracks the drums on some of the albums. Obviously, he writes the drums for the newest album and stuff. So I think that um, it's got to be, it's got to be the Foo from the Foo Dave. Yeah, I totally agree with you, uh, which I don't know, you may be surprised at that fact, but I just think like the, the contributions that you know have have come directly from from the Foo Fighters project, just in terms of impacting people's lives, and and for me, they're just kind of like this beacon of persistence and positivity that I think is really important and really necessary. Um, whether you love their music or not, I think you have to appreciate that and 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 learn something from that. So I'm firmly in the camp of uh, Foo Fighters Grohl. If I had to pick, the nice thing is that we don't mm-hmm. have to pick. Um, so I'm really happy about that, that we don't have to pick. Um, next question here. This is kind of in the vein of how we opened uh, opened the Q&A with the Creed talk. But um, we got a question. What are your thoughts on Switchfoot? I'm going to see them in September. I've actually seen Switchfoot, Chris. You've seen Switchfoot? <laughs> I've seen them back in the... Oh, back yeah, their, dude. I saw them back day, in the huh? day. I was a... That legit might have been my first concert. No I saw way. them in the Newsboys, I think. In, uh, in Reading, yeah. Um, that was probably 2000, that's probably like 10, it was definitely 10 years ago, probably 15 years ago. Could have mm-hmm. been 2008. I think I was in middle school. Um, I don't know what they're playing right now, or I haven't heard them in a while, but uh, they were big. I really liked them a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, they were one of the first, guess, you know, Christian rock, you know, one of the rock bands, you know, different genre, but they're great. Um, they were, I can't remember the lead singer's name. But I would go, definitely go. Expect a, expect a good show. It would be emotional at times. Depends, you know, where you stand. And Dare You to uh, Move comes yeah, on or Meant to Live, the, the two hits from back Dare in the day. Move. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, okay, so I, I grew up, obviously, I'm a, I'm a PK. I'm a pastor's kid. So Switchfoot, we listen. There's a lot of Switchfoot going around in my circles. Uh, but as an outsider, when you hear that stuff on the radio, because I heard Dare to, Dare you to Move and, and yeah, Meant to Live, like, what were your takes on the? Because the Christian rock genre of of the early 2010s is pretty, pretty special, pretty interesting. Like, it's, I don't know if we're gonna get that again. Probably will, but what did you think about Switchfoot? Well, I didn't know. I I had no idea that they were a Christian band. Um, so I, I went to I, I grew up. I went to Catholic school until At I all. went to college. Yeah, I didn't know they were a Christian band. I also didn't really spend much of my time investigating or, or analyzing Switchfoot. But yeah, I like uh, by virtue of going to Catholic school, I was I was lightly exposed to uh, you know some different elements of Christian rock because that was what our teachers allowed us to play in the classroom. Like when we were 
doing independent reading or whatever. So I remember the big band at the time, uh, they were like the heartthrobs of Christian rock was uh, 10th Avenue North, if you know who they are. Um, yeah. I remember, yeah, man. We used they, were, to, they were a Christian band? They were a Christian band, yeah, dude. Totally oh, yeah. Christian. Yeah, maybe they were. It's all about God for them. But yeah, man, I mean... I don't know, Switchfoot, they were just kind of one of those, one of those bands. There was a lot of those bands, as you said, um, and they sounded like a lot of them. But, they, were, you know, they were good in their own right. Um, so I hope, um, I hope the Switchfoot show is enjoyed uh, by, you know, the asker of this question and that they're going. Did you so. ever listen to uh, Reliant K, Chris? No, I never did, no. Now, that, that's a good band. They're, they're technically a Christian band, but they, had, um, they, were, they were really fun. We used to play them. Uh, we played one of their songs. Um, and they're just like pretty, they're not punky, but they're, they're just like that. They alt rock and fast paced, yeah, kind of progressive. And they were, they were really, really solid. And they, and they intermix a lot with people that, cause some people didn't want to listen to anything that was Christian, you know? So right. even though it was maybe good rock and roll, they wouldn't give it its day, yep. but they were, they could mix really well mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's roll through some more of these questions here. Um, so this next question, one that's very important. Um, when are you releasing a grudge album? I think they meant grunge. I, th I think grudge. Yeah. I think the typo monster. Uh, I don't know. Chris, I don't know. I don't know. You think they you could think be on to no, a grudge, grudge album? album. <laughs> what would yes. that mean? Like we just we so, hate one another or. It, well, I mean, if we release it together, like it's going to be, we had to write songs about who, you know, we hold grudges against. Right. So obviously, like University of Pittsburgh, um, probably Ticketmaster. Oh yeah, um, definitely Ticketmaster. Well, we have. Is, is Starbucks uh, that one, still on the that shit one list? artist? Oh hell yeah. yeah, Starbucks is yeah Starbucks is on the list. Ryan Adams or whatever his name yeah, is. Yeah, Ryan Adams is on the uh, list. Yep. The name we don't want to speak. Uh, who else is on our grudge album? There's a lot. Uh, of, there's a lot of people that we probably. We might not be able to discuss Randy some Jewel. More, more, more ni ni <laughs> Randy Jewel, some more nihilists of the Randy day. Randy Jewel's on the list. Um, certain uh, track and field <laughs> coaches throughout the NCAA are still on our list. Um, of course. Yeah, there's there's quite a few of them. What so. other artists? What artist is on your grudge list other than Ryan Adams? Other than Ryan, I mean, Ryan Who, Adams. Guns N' Roses? Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose is definitely on the list. Um, I, think, yeah. I think maybe... No, 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 they're not on the list. That's a pretty good list. There's a lot of, you can make an album off of that. Right, right. So we might so have to. So I guess, what, what was the other question? So if it wasn't a typo, or if it was a typo. If it was a typo, when is our grunge record? album coming out? I think our grudge album comes out before a grunge I, album. I, th so. I think so too, yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the most logical point uh, we have to. Uh, yeah, I, I think we should make this happen. I think we should grudge album or a grunge. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, I think we. I think we should make both of them happen. Let's talk to Capitol Records. Get it done. Exactly. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll have to get that done. So, um, let's see here. Another question. Do you guys like ska? I had a phase, obviously. <laughs> I, uh, back I in think, the day, I think you had a phase. <laughs> <laughs> I had a phase. Um, yeah, my you know my the singer. In my band, Sam Culp, we've talked about a few times. He was the one who connected us with June Swoon project mm -hmm. back in the day. Julie, uh, he he was very diverse, and we we would we would really and Drew. I mean, we all did. I don't know if Drew ever got into ska. I don't know if he likes the horns and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but Sam, I mean, we got like Five Iron Frenzy is really solid. Um, what's the the uh, Mighty Boston's right? Mm -hmm. Mighty, Mighty Boston's. Mighty Mighty Boston's, yeah. And then there's like a bunch of other, I'm just remembering that he made a list of like all the ska albums of the year or something. I listened to a bunch and they're good. They're, I mean, crazy music. Like it's one of those like, compared to, you know, the Dream Theater, you know? Yeah. You ever heard of them? Mm -hmm. They have the, and they're like virtuosos, you know, and they play this really in, intense, like deep music. And like, you know, a few songs are like really cool. But then like, if you try to listen to an album, you're just like, it's like a math class. Kind of like, and sometimes math rock can be like that as well. Yeah. Where you listen to it and you're like, this is really cool. And then you get like six songs in and it's like, you know, all right. They're still just like <laughs> going around <laughs> shredding and doing all this stuff. Yeah. And Scott can be like that too. You listen to it and you're just like, wow, this is like really cool. The horns come in, it's big. And you get to like the fourth song and the horns are still blasting in your ears. <laughs> the horns and you're are like, still big. <laughs> <laughs> the horns are still blasting. The people are still like bah, 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 and chopping around and stuff. Yeah. And uh, 
it's good. I, I do like ska, but how about you, Chris? Do you have any experience in it? No, I, I've never had a phase, so um, <laughs> I, I can't really give an opinion, but I, I have a feeling that I, I don't know, maybe I would like it. I, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm not really, uh, I'm not in line, you know, to, to listen to some ska. There's, there's enough else out there that's been keeping me occupied for the last 26 and three quarter years of my life. So um, who knows, though? Yeah. You know, it can always come back around. I have a question for you, Chris. All right. Off the uh, my own question sheet. Um, <laughs> he came ready. How much would you? So the Taylor Swift concerts that have been going on. Um, what would you value one of those experience sets? So obviously people are paying crazy amounts, and I know you're a Taylor Swift fan. Um, have you had any thought over the years of, of wanting to see her? Because, and I'm not saying that you know for the people out there that probably like, why would Chris ever do that, or I would do that. But I, like I would Taylor go to Swift. a concert. I would go to one. I mean, yeah. she's she's the music icon in the world right now. She's an incredible you know I mean? she's, performer. She is. Too. She's like, she's the Michael Jackson of like what's us of our time and period, yeah. place for sure. In you know, in the in the music sense, mm. and yeah, like you know, I'd want to go and experience that because that's like history in the making. You know, Me it's too. like you had to be there. Yeah. So what what do you think would you'd value a ticket? Like how much would you spend for a Taylor oh, Swift? This so, is a tough tough question to answer. There's yeah, a lot so, of factors. So you asked you asked me two questions. Like would you see her live? And the, que- yeah, the question is absolutely like I would. Um, I feel like that logistically like the ship has set sail for me because I just I some of these prices um, like there's who knows may, there would be a situation where like I would I you know if I had the ability to I would I would spend like that amount of money on a, on a show maybe. Um, but I mean, I, for one ticket, because it's not, the thing is, it's not just the tickets, right? It's the fee. It's, it's, it's what you buy <laughs> there. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's the ride share to and from, it Parking, might be a hotel. Right? It might, it's all that kind of thing. So whatever the, whatever the concert ticket is, I mean, add, you know, 50% of that price, you know, for, for all of the other incidentals. So, I mean, it could quickly become a four figure job, obviously, but I don't think you, for, for the Eras tour, like I don't think you could get in for less than a thousand, right? Secondary market. Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, from what I understand, it was I was so yeah, like, it was like I mean, I would minimum basically. I mean, if I like, if, wh- yeah, if I had the money, I mean, I I I think I don't know. It's hard to say. Like maybe eight hundred would be my ceiling. I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't know. What about you? What, yeah, do, you, what I mean, do you think? It's hard. It's hard to answer. Like it's one of those things. That I saw it. I was like, okay, like. I'm like the I'm gonna let the people have their day. Uh, you know, I don't I don't need to go and see this, especially for the price. So it's really hard to put a price on experiences. Yeah. You know? Uh and that's what it is. Like, and then all of a sudden you have this five thousand dollar experience tag that you need to live up to. It needs to be five thousand dollars worth of experience in, in a sense. Like How a do you concert. quantify that? And that's why sometimes the cheap stuff you're like yeah, how do you quantify that? So I, I have a difficult time, like, like even the bands are like, because okay, if you were to pay a thousand dollars for Taylor Swift, then you compare that to other bands. So you pay a thousand dollars for Temple of the Dog or something. Mm-hmm. We had an opportunity to maybe do that, and it's I don't know if a concert is should ever be worth a thousand dollars. Like I'm trying to think, like when people play music, like is it is it ever should it ever be valued of over in like over a thousand dollars? It's such a weird thing to me. To think about it's the lovely world sense? of the lovely like, world of like, capitalism at work here. Yeah, should live music ever be like? Is it real, like is that experience like a thousand dollars worth of like production? You know what I mean? Like if I pay a thousand dollars, you better be jumping out of a plane with somebody that's gonna you know pop a parachute. <laughs> well, well, that's at the, right the thing. Time. I mean, cl- clearly, <laughs> and that's not even that costs like two fifty. <laughs> clearly, it should be a thousand dollars because they sell out at that price, and and the, and there's thousands of other people who would not hesitate to pay that type of money to go see it. Um, I mean, there was there were a lot of studies like relative to other entertainment industries, like concerts were undervalued relative to uh, a lot of different you know other areas for a long time, but I think it's finally catching up now. Uh, but the fucking junk fees, uh, I mean that, that in and of itself, because that's the thing. I mean, you, you pay, you pay eight, $900 for a ticket and then the fee is going to be, you know, the fee is going to be pretty hefty too. Um, so that's the thing, Taxes. the goddamn fees. So yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I hope to never, I don't know. I've seen 
And that's why you go to the shows. You, if you like a band that you recently discovered, see them as soon as possible. Get out and see them uh, when you can yeah. still go to a little rock club and see them, when you can still you know, hop into a nice little theater situation and see them. Uh, that's what you got to do. I mean, the Taylor Hawkins tribute show was... 125 you know or in like yeah. it was like 100 bucks he yeah. made sure that's that because we got in though face value yeah so that's that's the determining factor here yeah, yeah different I, yeah. different question if it's face value obviously because i don't think the face value is that much although Ticketmaster does have that dynamic is pricing it? thing now i don't know i, I, I mean i didn't look into yeah, it I, was, yeah, I thought the face value was yeah well i think it, de it depends if they yeah. use the, the the dynamic pricing or not but i don't know um thousand thousands a lot i hope i hope the day never comes that i feel the need to do something like that but who's to say right it's really hard to say right yeah so we have another question uh, here got a few more yeah i got a, got a couple more we're, we're gonna rapid fire a couple of these so somebody wants to know does my girlfriend carla love me do you think do you think this person's <sighs> girlfriend loves them if you if you have to ask the question <laughs> If you're asking people, if you're, if you're trying to find out the answers, especially I us, think it's, it's if you're asking no, us, my man, yeah, <laughs> it might be no. Yeah, this this uh, it might be no. I mean, it's just it's not a good sign. It's not a good starting point. Yeah, that's pretty challenging. I would I would agree with you, Ethan. I I, I don't think Carla loves them. Yeah, it's sad, but I mean, unless, it's, unless we're missing something. Yeah, it happens from time to time. Um, this is a question that I I might commandeer because Ethan, I I don't know the the depth. Um, that you'll be able to discuss this with. But we got a question asking, what is our favorite Mark Lanigan record? Um, so I'm going to go mm. ahead. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say my favorite Lanigan record. Solo this is, one. It's fine. Yeah. My favorite Lanigan one record is his last one, I think, Straight Songs of Sorrow, which came out in 2020. Um, it was like a companion to his, uh, his memoir, Sing Backwards and Weep. I was going through the worst time in my life and I would just get up, I would read his book, and listen to that album just like for hours and hours. Um, so I can't really listen to it much anymore, but it's it's my favorite just because of the effect that it had on me. So I'm gonna pick that and we're gonna go with that. So um, what do you say, Ethan? Like one or two more questions? Sound good? Uh, one. One more, okay. <laughs> I one thought you were giving question. me the choice. No. I am giving you the question. So one I am or giving two you more. the choice. All right. yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do one Either more. And this comes from a top tier Patreon supporter. Uh, this comes from our lovely friend Keith White. And Keith has a good question here. Keith says, "If you could be oh, the me good guy, excuse good me, guy. if you could be the member of any band to replace, who would it be and why?" I think we've run this exercise before, but basically, we kick somebody out of the band and we take their place. Yeah, we've done this um, just for their ability, right? Nothing else that comes with it. I think it. just for their ability. I, I mean, would you could go... kick them out because they're an asshole, but. I mean, I think I'd want to be Chris Cornell. You're I kicking think. Chris out of it's, the I mean, band. Him, him or, it's, it's him or Lane. Do, I mean, do I have their abilities, right? I mean, I guess, right? It's up to or, you. Or am I to fill the, fill the shoes? I you thought might if have I had, to fill if the shoes. Pick, <laughs> if I could, or if I had like a superhero power and I could steal their abilities, I'd steal Chris or Lane and be a front man. I've always wanted to be a front man. I've been a drummer for a lot of my life. And like being in front of the stage and controlling the crowd, I think it's really special. Sounds really cool. And I think that, yeah. And those guys, uh, I mean, Ed, you know, it would be fun to be to do Ed, be Eddie as well and be able to climb mm -hmm. the rafters. And yeah, he's you know he's obviously crazy too. Yeah, so I think I, I would take a front man though. Okay, interesting. Something tells me you may want to take a a shredding position. I don't know. No, Ethan, I thought about this because I saw when this question came in. Uh, and if I could replace anybody in a band and take their role, um, I'm kicking Boom Gasper out of Pearl Jam and I'm hopping behind the Hammond B3 organ. <laughs> I'm taking over. I'm taking over. Boom you know, I wish <laughs> for the sole purpose. And I thought about this. The reason why I'm doing that is because like. People don't really pay much attention to be Boom, and you get the best seat in the house for a Pearl Jam tour. It's like following Pearl Jam on tour, except yes. you're getting paid to do it. It's great. <laughs> that's what I would do. Well, I'm that's kick, actually I'm kicking Boom out of the band. That is a great. I was I was thinking about that like when it was when you were answering the question. I was like, it'd be kind of cool to be like one of the bass players in one of the bands because you don't. I mean, no disrespect to bass, but. Um, you wouldn't have the pressure of being a front man. You could, right, or different. the pressure of like a lot of the solos. Yeah, so you could you could get to enjoy watching 
uh, you know, the artists that we love. Um, but Boom is is the perfect answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm kicking Boom out. I love so, it. With and you all could, due respect, and you would, you would be on the, you would take us. If I was at home, I'd I'd hold up my my cup. Uh, the cup, cup holder, the Pearl Jam what, cup what, what place, holder with with the place, Boom Gasper. The place. Yeah, and that would be you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to Photoshop me into it. It'll be that's fantastic. Well, I think that's enough Q and A for today, right? We, we've kind of we've we've run the stick yeah. for a while, so uh, yeah, it's been a long pod. So yeah, we should get out of here after we do songs of the week. Yeah, one last thing. So if you're listening still, thank you so much for checking in. Uh, please browse the other episodes. We have a lot of good ones, and we have some more on the way next week, same time. It'll be released on Monday. Um, and if you are interested in showing support, please check the show notes or links in the bio. And there's a way to find our Patreon, and you can be a two, five, or ten dollars uh, supporter, and that will help us greatly to improve this week by week. Yeah, man. So last segment, we have the songs of the week, where we give you what we're listening to in the moment, and you guys get to check them out. So Chris, would you like to go first? Yeah, I will go first. Uh, my song of the week is uh, directly inspired by last week's episode. Um, so Ethan, when we were talking to PD last week, we were asking about his influences, and I thought it was really interesting where he was like, the only band that I've ever fallen in love with enough to want to know and learn everything about them was Death Cab for Cutie. Um, and that was a really interesting conversation that I for all intents and purposes was on the sidelines for because I was never really a death cab person. I never really took time to listen. Um, and the interesting thing is so many of my favorite artists, uh, reference death cab as one of their foremost influences. Um, you know, PD obviously last week on the episode, um, many interviews that Julian Baker has done. She has said death cab was like, you know, one of the biggest influences. So, I took that as a sign last week hearing PD talk about Death Cab that I was like, I'm, I'm going to get into Death Cab a little bit. So I started with Plans, um, which yeah. I think is the best place to start. Um, you know, that was the album that he was talking about at the time. And I just played it from the top. And dude, I, I got chills when Marching Bands of Manhattan came on and it started to get into it a little bit. So that's going to be my song of the week. Um, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm becoming a Death Cab person. It's so. funny. Yeah, that was uh, when you when you started talking about that. I was like, I'm gonna pick an. I was gonna pick a song from the album because I've been listening to it a lot as well. Mm -hmm. And that was my that was gonna be my choice. No way, um, so I which robbed is really you. funny. That song, <laughs> you did. That's that song is beautiful. This album, um, I've I've been listening to this, and uh, you know their newest one, uh, mm -hmm. Asphalt Meadows, and and the other one uh, name is escaping me. Uh, oh yeah, trans how do you say it? trans Atlanticism. Yeah, trans really good. Atlanticism. And yeah, we say it. But um, so that's that's good. Death Cab can't can't get enough of them. Um, when I was on, we we had the had the meet two days ago, and we had to take public transport back, and we hopped on the train. We had about an hour and a half, and picked up some people. And it was funny. Well, there's two stories that go with this, I guess. So the two, couple couple drunk um, Austrians hopped on and were singing, oh, sick. and they were also playing music. Yeah, and they had this this song that they started they played and they were singing and it was an EDM like a rave song and they were getting really into it and singing loudly and it was awesome. So my my song of the week is called Dorf Love, and it's by uh, you know a, a language that I'm not really sure. So I'm just gonna add it on <laughs> Dorf Love by Chris and Galingen or something. I don't know. Um, but it's so funny. Then we, we hopped on the other one. When, when we got to downtown Vienna, we hopped on the other transport. And there were Ramstein shirts everywhere. And there must have been a concert uh, in the downtown. And there were, like, all these, you know, heavy metal fans. And it was, it was wild to see. And, of course, we got off. And then there was a fight. And it was, like, very – it smelled terrible on the on – the, 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 the train because of it it was quite wild to uh to be to see that just because you hear about them as a heavy metal band from germany that i don't know you just hear about it so it was funny that we go i go over there one time and i see that they're playing we're there. there yeah yeah so all right so those are our songs of the week 
one really thoughtful one, good one that's probably way better than mine. But this song was pretty cool and pretty fun. So oh, yeah. I'll we'll have to, I'll have to check that one out. I'm looking forward to it. So yeah. I think that about does it for episode 123 of the Grunge Bible podcast. Um, Ethan, it's been a pleasure as always. I'm glad we were able to get this done in the midst of the travel and the competition season uh, over there in Europe, in Lithuania currently. So I look forward to uh, next week. We're going to do this again, and we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it again. So I think that uh, that about does it here. Thanks, everybody, for your time, for listening. Uh, we hope you go back and listen to old episodes, and we hope you stick around with us for next week's episode and beyond. Absolutely. All right, guys, stay heavy, and we'll talk to you next week. Stay heavy. Stay heavy.